Okay, it's on. Yes. Okay, excellent. It's on. Yep. Okay. So, um, my name is Ben Curry. I'm a property owner in Windsong, uh, N100 W15043 Windsong Circle. And my uh, house is uh, this house right here. Talking about as far as the buckthorn, uh, the, the the buckthorn removal, we, we share forest lines. So I I, I prepared a statement, and uh, I, I was going to read it. And mainly, like uh, Bob said, I wanted to thank uh, the village for uh, you know considering this and supporting it. So um, we're we're encouraged that this item is uh, on the agenda tonight, and I think it's going to prove to be a positive. The item for Germantown's ability to preserve its natural habitat while supporting uh, property value throughout the area. Uh, we, we need PWCs and the village's help to fight back the invasive buckthorn that's on the water tower starlight property. It's it's not native to the land and it, it turns a beautiful uh, Wisconsin forest into a congested, unpassable jungle mess. Uh, the buckthorn has moved from the water tower property and invaded my property. Uh, my, my property is just one of uh, other properties that you can see on the map. Uh, on my property, we've been trying to fight back the buckthorn and replace it with native grasses and wildflowers and trees, but it's difficult to win because we can only do so much when the buckthorn continues to uh, want to invade from the water tower property. Uh, what we're encouraged that the village is considering joining the fight against the invasive buckthorn uh, by taking care of the buckthorn on the water tower property. And then that will help us as we're fighting the uh, buckthorn on our personal properties. Uh, the, the, the village uh, should be supportive of the buckthorn because it uh, buckthorn decreases enjoyment of the property. It decreases the overall utility or value that that property has to offer. And it hurts the ability for native plants to grow on the property. On, on a more personal level, I've I've lived in that house since first grade, and then I just purchased it for my folks. So I uh, no buckthorn wasn't there because I was running around in the forest, enjoying the forest when I was young. And now I have young children, and I I, I want them to be afforded the same opportunity to uh, in, enjoy that forest. It's 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 a very nice part of the. Uh, uh, reason why we like to live there, uh, but it's only going to happen if we can truly eradicate the buckthorn. Uh, my my family has been doing its part, trying to get rid of it. We've spent uh, countless hours and uh, thousands of dollars over the years trying to remove the buckthorn. Uh, we're working on the buckthorn this year. We will next year, and likely the following year. But we'll we'll have to do less and less if we have your support with the water tower property. Um, Paul's plan. And uh, John's plan is is uh, comprehensive, in my opinion, and should provide a long term winning strategy against the buckthorn, including uh, restoring the forest to its original value and uh, uh, protecting all the property value that surrounds the water tower property. So thank you for giving me a chance to speak and uh, consideration of approving this agenda item. Thank you, Mr. Curry. Okay, so uh, what we've got before you tonight is um, the water utility has been requested by several concerned residents around the Starlight Water Tower to help prevent the spread of buckthorn and other noxious trees and shrubs that are growing on the water tower grounds. We all met on site this spring with the village forester to listen and discuss everyone's concerns. After meeting with the village forester and I decided, uh, devised the phased work plan to mitigate the buckthorn and to improve the aesthetics of the water tower grounds wooded area. The scope of the work is described below in four potential phases with phase two containing a alternate to clear cut all the tra trees on site. So phase one, what we're looking at is uh, removal of all buckthorn, other evasive shrubs and all trees 12 inches and smaller, unless marked as saved. And then that work would also include stump grinding and possible use of a forestry moor. Phase two is removal of approximately 50% of the remaining trees with an alternate bid to clear cut those remaining trees plus stump grinding. Phase three provides um, providing grading, topsoiling, 
grass seed and cover establishment mulch to all the disturbed areas with the goal of establishing turf that can be maintained through regular seasonal mowing. Phase four is a planting uh, tree and planting phase for, um, for shrubs and trees purchased by the village in selected areas at the site. Uh, also providing one year guarantee of the plant material. So we uh, sent this out to bid to five uh, preferred contractors also was on the village's website. Those five uh, bidders were Bark River Tree Service, a new leaf tree service, Schmitz uh, Brushing Service, m and Tree Service, and TNT Tree Service. We only received two bids back, and those are as follows. So Bark River Tree Service for phase one and two, those totals were $35,395. Phase two, um, new leaf tree service, their, their bids for phase one and two was the, the apparent low bidder at $27,000. For our budgetary process for next year in 2022, the utility only budgeted uh, $25,000 for phase one and two, and not knowing if this was to be approved, we did not include funding for phase three and four. But we are estimating that the additional uh, amount to be around 25,000 for these other two phases. We have the option to move phase three and four to 2023, but we would like to discuss including these two phases uh, for continuous work to be completed in 2022. Um, Paul, what was included in the actual budget for 2022? Phase one and two only? 25,000, correct. Okay. So it came in a little higher, but it's right. a, again, a placeholder. I I did discuss it with Administrator Krecklow, just um, you know, an additional $25,000 hit to the budget. Um, we're not that concerned with um, revenue funds and where we sit um, with some of our other accounts. So. Okay, I guess my, my concern with that is we just went through this entire process of raising our water, our water bills. And this is coming very closely on the heels of that. I do not mind doing what's approved in the budget phases 1 and 2. I would say I would vote to approve that tonight. I think I would hesitate to approve the others until we really take a look at the income. Because we haven't even have we sent out the invoices with the increase yet? No, no. You know, I would rather wait on that, and that's something. If the money is there, we can come back here in February after the bills go out or March, and have Steve Krecklow here as well to say, "Yep, this is perfect. Okay. We got the money for it." Because right now we don't know if we have the money for it, and that's a concern to me. If if we hold off on the work on phases three and four, are we going to double pay for some of the same? No, three, phases three and four are after phases one and two. So there's no there's no overlap between the phases. With you know we're not double doing the work from that's, phase. You know, so we're not going to no, have clear we're that. not. No, it's just, um, and and that's fine. We can certainly do that. Come back to the board with where we are financially. I did talk to Steve about it, and he felt comfortable asking for this twenty five thousand dollars now in light of the rate increase and just again what we have in in revenues on hand. Uh, in reserve. So if you still feel you guys want to do that, Steve and I can put together. I mean, I would think that um, if we can get a bid together for it for phase three and four, by that time in, in February or March, we should have those numbers then. Well, it was include, we had those dollar amounts. Um, Oh, you did. That was they bid everything. Yeah. So um, we've got prices for okay, those three and four. What we don't know is it's kind of like putting a water main in. You, you know, you put a, a budget amount in, and you're not going to know how much grading and topsoiling and mulching you're going to have until after some of the major work is done. And I'm assuming the stuff is right around the lot line, right? Right. It where is. It's kind of creeping in from the lot line. And... Right. So again, if you just want to look at the map, the green yeah. line is our property border. Yep. Um, everything inside of that to the water tower is owned by us. If you ever walk it, um, it is a nice wooded area, but over time, it just never been tended to. So we're, again, trying to be good neighbors. Um, it is creeping in, migrating, and birds love eating the seeds. And Trust me, I know I have 1,500 feet of uh, line okay. like this that's full of buckthorn, and I cut it every year, and yeah. it comes back every year, and then you just try to push it back a little bit. So I, I understand the need for this. And, and the creep that goes on with it. And now with this other invasive species coming, it's just the constant battle. Mm -hmm. um, I, I guess I, I tend to agree with Terry. Let's let's see where it goes and if we can do that. When do they, they plan on starting the work? 
Uh, I believe we were going to start in February. Um, with phase 1 and 2, they want to come okay. in when it's when the it, ground is froze. We hopefully that'll mitigate some of the extra costs that we see mm -hmm. in phase 3 right. and 4. Mm -hmm. um, and then in spring, then we can get in and see the, the overall damage and then go from there. So it'd be fair to say you could come back. We, we, we could, it, it's a fair statement. Yes. It'll, it'll take them what a week or so. Couple yeah, a couple of weeks, probably. So you prep the March agenda. Sure. We yeah. can take a look at that. Perfect. Okay. Do we have a motion? Yeah. Well, I'll make a motion to approve the uh, phase one and two portion of the service with uh, newly service of, uh, not to exceed $27,000. I'll second it. Any more discussion? I just have one comment, and it's a Buckthorn comment that I think, you know, we all have this Buckthorn issue. I have it on my property too. And part of the problem is they don't accept Buckthorn anymore at what are we supposed to do with it? And Larry, if you could put that on the agenda and maybe have Tim somebody also come for that, because I think that's a question a lot of people have. I know my neighbors do. We, we like you can cut and cut and cut, but then where do you go with it? You can take it in in the spring, but not, not the fall. Take it in one time. They pick it up at the street. Yeah, but it's it's the bear. It's once it develops the berries. Right. Is when we stop taking it. I think we need some clarification on that because my neighbor has been turned back like in June yeah. and said, get out of here with your bucks on. Uh, part of this project is they have to haul it off site at their cost. Yeah, but we want to yeah, get rid of ours. <laughs> I get it. Sure. So we should have a big buckthorn. I mean, burning is one of the only options and one of the only options that many people don't like to or mm -hmm. can't do. Yeah. yeah. But that's a problem. If you're trying to eliminate an, uh, an invasive species, you have to have some way to eliminate it, and we don't really. Mm -hmm. So, but anyway, um, we have a motion and a second. No, no more discussion. We'll vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? It's unanimous. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. Um, cross connection control. What is this one here? Okay. In relation to execute cross connection control contract. Yes, so the one utility is requesting authorization to execute an ongoing 2 year contract of 28,000 dollars 28,800 build at 1200 dollars monthly to hydro to provide cross connection control inspection for commercial and industrial properties for backflow prevention. Hydrocorp has been the villages ongoing cross connection inspection firm for the past several years with competitive pricing to do their familiar familiarity with our village. Do we currently have a 2 year contract with them? That's expiring. Now. Yes. And is this how much of an increase is this? Did I miss uh, they kept the prices the same well, from the last year. Can't beat that. Ready? Uh, I'll make a motion to approve a 2 year contract with Hydrocorp in the amount of uh, $28,800 uh, for cross connection control inspection. Uh, paid from account 50 I'll second. Any questions or discussion on that? We'll vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? It's unanimous. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> blanket purchase order for hydrant and valve replacements, water service repairs, and water main breaks. Okay, so the one utility is requesting an open PO on a time and material basis for hydrant replacements to include the lead, valve assembly, water main and lateral repairs, and hardscape restoration. This is an ongoing replacement program as we identify old and malfunctioning hydrants and valves and for emergency repairs. Is this something we've had in place? I believe I've asked a couple years um, for the same open PO request, yes. Committee. Even the details right now. Well, Paul, there's there's four different line items here that are affected. Correct. Which just makes your life a little easier, right? And, yes, forward. mine and yours. It it and, and it, as you remember, a couple of years ago, you did ask me to go and ask contractors for bids. These one offs, two offs, three offs, they they don't want to. Yeah. 
and it makes our life easier because we can manage those at on our timing versus trying to um, make it a bid project and okay. so these aren't the emergency repairs there, some of them are too okay so this would cover some of the emergency repairs yeah. and something that was just identified as your you know checking and, and a car whatever. hits a hydrant boom yeah. we got to fix it um valve blows apart we've got to fix it a, a service leak occurs we got to fix it yeah i mean most of the time you come with uh, these bills and we don't have much of a choice it has to be done because there's water gushing out all over um i, I guess i'm i'm open to this um so i will make a motion to, do i have to read this whole thing no. <laughs> i'll make a motion to take staff recommend uh, recommendations on the contract services as needed. I'll second. More discussion or questions? Just one question, just for my own familiarity. So, so Paul, what you're saying is, um, if we took the first one, and it says not to exceed 180,000, if you got to that point, you would have to come back anytime it would go over if it's not an emergency Correct. situation. Correct. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Any more questions, comments? Not we'll vote. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Opposed? Unanimous. Thank you. All right. What's next? Well, number this is your night, Paul. It well, is. Number five, replacement Bringing of the VFP and installation of power disconnect. Okay. So uh, the WADI uh, requests authorization to hire CTW for the replacement of the existing variable speed drive. That was damaged back in August of this year due to electrical storms. The cost to replace this VFD is $29,130 and is under an insurance claim. At the same time, we request authorization to add a transfer uh, switch power disconnect to this well at a cost of $13,580. This new piece of equipment will aid the running of well five when well seven goes offline next year for the replacement of the MCC panel. It will be used to plug in a temporary industrial generator to power up well five for the duration of the electrical work at well seven. So they're connected electrically? They are. Electric. Service, the main service really comes into seven and then feeds well five. These are the two that are right next to each other, I assume. Yep. <laughs> Uh, when you say the cost of the VFD is under an insurance claim, do we know if we're getting paid for that or have we gotten? Yes, we haven't gotten it. I've been turning all the receipts in. Uh, we've got a boiler and uh, equipment breakdown insurance policy that I've claimed several projects on. This will be another one. So we expect to be paid? We expect to be paid. Twenty nine thousand. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. And you'll come back and let us know? If oh, absolutely. Not, oh, yeah. Whatever, yep. Steve or somebody? Yep. Okay. So essentially, even though we're we will be approving the 427, 29 of that will be correct. Hopefully coming back to us within some reasonable period of time. Committee, what do we do? I'll make a motion to approve the $42,710 uh, from the quote by CTW out of account 50-722-530-6310. I have a second. I'll second it. Okay. Any more discussion or questions for Paul on this? Hearing none, we'll vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? It's unanimous. An agreeable. Thank you. Um, F, hydrant stem removal tool purchase. Okay. So the village water utility requests authority to purchase a new hydraulic hydrant stem removal tool. Hydrants that are over 20 to 30 years old, we cannot remove the stem using the manufacturer's stem removal tool because these stems can seize or gall from metal to metal contact inside the hydrant barrel. This piece of equipment creates sufficient force spinning the stem assembly to remove that stem. At the time of our budget preparation in August, I could not get a hard quote from the distributor, so I put a placeholder of $15,000 in the budget. There are no competitors to provide mm -hmm. quotes. So it's about 5,700 more than we thought. Correct. One, one caveat out of this is we wanted to do a demo before we even, you know, went forward on this. So we did have a hydrant um, slated for uh, 
extrication, removal, replacement, and estimates that I put together was about ten to twelve thousand dollars. So we did get a freebie because of the demo that saved us that kind of money. And if you think about the cost at just that hydrant alone, two or three hydrants that we use this tool on, the tool is pretty much paid for itself. So ongoing, it's going to be a real benefit that I believe to the utility and just ease of ease of pulling these stems out where we can't get them out normally. How often do you have to do that? Two, three times a year. There's that, they get really tough over 30 years. And so um, it, it definitely will pay for itself. Oh, for sure. Because yeah, otherwise it, it's, wow. We've had dozens of hydrants that, yeah, we, you can't remove the stems and. Yeah. Yep. The Arden manufacturer stem removal tool won't work on it. No, it's because a, they're so it's kind tough. of a wimpy tool and it's removed you, you you latch onto it from above ground. This actually all it's a eight foot tube and it goes all the way to the brass assembly mechanism and it's a hydraulic ratchet uh impact wrench and it just creates this three thousand psi uh vibration and it just spins oh, it right out. Oh, big day. Come in. Water is crazy. I'll, uh, I'll make a motion to approve the um, Stanley Hydrant Saver sold by CNM Hydraulic Tool Supply not to exceed twenty thousand seven hundred dollars and twenty three cents, and that to come out of account number fifty dash one eighty dash one eighty four dash thirty nine forty. I'll second that. Any more questions? I'm in awe of the new tool. <laughs> <laughs> we were too when we saw it work. So. If, if there are no questions, we'll vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? It's unanimous. Thank you. That's pretty cool. Um, consideration of invoice from Munson Inc. Emergency Asphalt Repair on Pilgrim Road. Last one. Water. Thank Doesn't you. Doesn't each guy get like a million dollar limit per year or something? Yeah. It's all he's got, yeah. <laughs> Okay. dollars in 15 minutes. Over and uh, the village water utility requests authorization to pay the invoice for Munson Inc. in the amount of $17,733 for the asphalt repair of two water main breaks that occurred on Pilgrim Road. Yeah, I'll go. I'll make a motion to pay this invoice from Munson Inc. not to exceed $17,733 from account 5074-2-5306730. I'll second. I'll yeah, second. It's, didn't we do something with this previously? Wasn't that, well, was I, that a different bill? Like, it was a different bill. Okay. That was actually the labor material cost. This followed up from that repair. Okay. Any more questions? Discussion? Hearing none, we'll vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? It's unanimous. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. Um, resolution for jurisdictional transfer of County Trunk Highway F, Freistadt Road, and Wazaki Road. Harry, I can see yours, huh? I'm going to handle this for Administrator Pickle. So um, the Washington County uh, approached the village. Um, to do a jurisdictional transfer, County Trunk Highway F, which is Freistad Road and um, Wasaki Road. Uh, this is very similar uh, in a manner to what we did about two years ago when we transferred Goldendale Road, County Trunk Highway Y. Um, basically the same procedure. Um, I don't think I'm going to read the whole thing. What it basically is, I'll, I'll, I'll truncate it. It's um, transfer of about 1.66 miles of County Trunk Highway F, Freistad Road, um, from Highway 145 um, to Wasaki Road, which is County Trunk Highway M. And, and um, we would also transfer then a part of Wasaki Road from Freistad Road south to Mequon Road to the county. They want to take that over. Um, we only have half of that road, actually. Other than the west half, the east half is actually Mequon's Road. Um, so the transfer would involve us giving our half of, of Wasaki Road, Mequon to Freistadt, to the county. They would take over okay, all maintenance. That's a section of road that we rebuilt three years ago now, I think. And um, we would take on the responsibility for Freistadt Road from the intersection of Wasaki and Freistadt westerly to Trunk, State Trunk Highway 145. Um, along with that, the county would um, give us $615,200 um, for um, taking that road over. And basically what that is, it's 
it's money that like we got from Goldendale for an estimated amount to do a pavement replacement, repair on the road, restriping, um, if that would need to be done in the future. We would take on all responsibilities of it once we take it over, any culverts, any any drainage issues, any signage, everything that exists um, gets turned over to us. And of course the county would go out and remove their county truck highway signs though. For that one. For that, for that section of Freistad Road. So we would have Freistad Road then um, all the way through the village because we have responsibility for Freistad Road from 145 um, going west. We are what would it cost to actually like resurface that entire road and all, all of it that we own now? Uh, well, this section here is about that six hundred fifteen thousand dollars. Yeah, they have a they have did an annual program like we do on their roads. They do it pretty much typical. They know what it costs per mile of road. Um, they they pretty well nailed down on that. And um, we verified. We looked at their number, and it's it's just what they use to to repave. It'd be like a mill and and repaving some touch up of any soft field spots, um, well, things like that. Like the transfer though, because I mean, Mequon's still going to control um, Wazaki. No, they're going to take over. Are they taking side of what of um, Wasaki Road from Mequon to? They're going to make it right Highway there. M to 167, and that's going to be the continuous then instead yes, of that. Yes, and they're rebuilding in their portion of Highway M from Freistair Road north to is it Pioneer Wasaki, and then it goes up to Pioneer and then cuts over to and Country Air. So in 2022, they have a, a project. Um, the county does that they're going to rebuild Highway M from Freistadt all the way to Pioneer. Well, and that that was going to be my next question because Highway F is supposed to be resurfaced next year in conjunction with that. So but is that still going to occur before the transfer? No, that's why we're getting this sum of money for that. We're we're agreeing to take it for that right now. Um, and they are redoing. Pardon me. I said I was so looking forward to my road getting done. And and then. The, <laughs> As part of that, they're turning, and we're aware that they just can't get the materials to do it yet, but they're turning that intersection of M and Freistadt into a four way stop um, intersection. Yeah, correct. You need something. That's, That's what they've sure. passed. That's now, we've brought that to the committee, uh, a meeting or two ago to do that. So, um, our recommendation, staff recommendation, is to um, accept this transfer. Um, if there are any other questions, I think we should do is, um, is um, my suggestion would be to. In your motion, approve this um, positively, send it to the village board. But let's put it on new business. In case there's any instead of consent agenda, it's important enough for that. You can do a, a past art zable where someone either votes no, or you can put it in your motion that it goes on new on the new business. Let's just make sure it's not on the consent agenda. Okay. If you make your motion that it goes on new business, um, Janice will make sure that it goes on new business. Maybe do I have a motion? Are there any other questions before we go? We have a motion second then. Yeah. All right. I'll, I'll make a motion to approve the jurisdictional transfer of County Trunk Highway F, also known as Freistat and Wasaki Roads, with the condition that it's put on the agenda as new business for the village board to approve. I'll second. Um, the only other discussion, I just a comment, I guess, uh, Fresh Dot Road um, is really beginning to take a lot of traffic. Rick, you agree with that? Mm -hmm. And when that new subdivision, <clears throat> they're just laying the sewer pipe for now on Fresh Dot, mm -hmm. that's going to be a crazy amount of traffic. Mm -hmm. So that road is definitely, uh, I hope we never have to widen it or anything. I mean, because then we don't. Well, the, do it the, in the county's resurfacing, they were going to put a bike lane in also yeah. uh, next year. And that's why I thought, boy, this is very interesting. The timing on this, that all of a sudden, it's I guarantee it is going to be postponed because now the subdivision is going to go in, and we're going to need some additional roaded, uh, you know, cutouts and stuff like that for this, and just like country air. So construction this traffic. won't this won't now be resurfaced for years. Well, in, dis in discussions with um, with Steve Kreklo, um you know, there's a lot of talks going on with uh, bike paths, walking paths in the village and, and improvements to that. And we're looking at this giving us the availability to do what the village wants to do for connected connectivity of our walking paths. Cause we're looking at a walkway down country or drive from Mequon all the way to Freistad and then ability to connect Freistad um, going westerly to some sidewalks that just dead end on Freistad in certain areas. And so that gives us the ability to develop that plan the way we want to also. Right. I might also make a suggestion that when this comes up before village board as new business, 
Uh, obviously, we can speak in favor of whatever else we want to do, but we can uh, make a motion to take that six hundred fifteen thousand dollars and hold it for Fresh Dat Road. And I don't think that's a bad idea. Right. But we'll let that happen at the board level. Uh, any more discussion? Hearing none, we'll vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Um, opposed? Nay. One and one in opposition. Rick. Okay, now a couple easy ones. Mm -hmm. uh, topsoil removal from the Murphy Pet Food Development Site. The next two are similar that I brought in some things I've asked for approval uh, previously. Uh, again, we're meeting the, the village ordinance where any developer um, who wants to remove what they determine to have excess topsoil from a site needs to come to the committee for approval to remove it. And um, this one and the following one um, are, are just that. So Goldendale Murphy Food is the is the project that's starting up on the northwest corner of Goldendale and Holy Hill. It's the pet food processing plant. Um, and they've submitted a request to remove 1,800 cubic yards of excess from the site. Um, their calculations would include retaining enough topsoil to do um, their berms and any other site work they have to restore. Okay, pretty straightforward. Yeah, I, I would uh, move to um, grant the request to remove 1,800 cubic yards of excess topsoil on the Golden Murphy Pet Food site. Second. Discussion? Not much to discuss, really. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? It's unanimous. Topsoil removal from the Capstone 41 development. Basically the same description, different site. Um, their topsoil removal request is larger. They had a larger, a larger site um, that they're working on um, currently. Uh, this is just for the current area that's being done for the, the number one building or phase one, which is the western side of their site. Um, if you're familiar with the, not familiar with this site, this is the site south side of Holy Hill Road. It's just across from Briggs and Stratton. Make a motion to um, approve the re removal of the 23,000 cubic yards of excess topsoil. Second. Second. Discussion? None will vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? It's unanimous. Okay, here's one of my least favorite ones. Consideration of invoice from Sweetwater in the amount of $12,620. It's like tripled in the last couple of years. The last year. So, um, as I stated here, the, the past years, um, and when I started here six years ago, so it was around $26, $2,800. Every year it goes up a little bit, and the last um, year was uh, approximately $3,900. Um, we've had meetings with, with Sweetwater, several meetings this year with staff to go over the the requirement of the increase and um, where this is all driven by. It's not an increase of, of personnel or cost of Sweetwater. It's an increase as to the requirements that DNR has placed on municipalities of what we're required to do to, to um, teach and inform um, the public. They, they've really changed the requirements of, of how many times you have to go out to the public and, and, uh, and inform them the methods you have to inform them. And, and this is actually a um, pool of, of the MS4 uh, municipalities that, that they join together and hire Sweetwater so we all don't have to do it on our own. If we had to do it on our own, it would require staffing and, and, and publications and everything. And it used to be this would, I think, publish some pamphlets and hand them out and They'd have a, a, a radio broadcast, and I never really saw anything on TV, um, but I anticipate we might see um, some sort of public announcement on TV, more on radios. The DNR is getting, is really trying to get um, information out to residents um, on, on, you know, requirements to, to keep our streams and lakes clean. And uh, that's really where this comes from. Um, I was honestly shocked at the number when I saw it. I didn't think it was gonna go up that much. How did they justify it? Um, just by saying DNR is. Yeah, well, we we met with them. They actually presented a, quite a quite an over, overview of what what the DNR wants to do. Um, we had to submit a a plan. They wanted us to to get together and submit a plan. So we every municipality had to submit um, a public information an outreach plan. Um, we had to to you know kind of go through and say what we're going to do. 
they had to Sweetwater had to meet with every one of the MS4 municipalities that are going to join with them to do this. So there's a, there's a cost in, in doing that, and that's a DNI requirement. We never did that before. It was always here's the public information format. Here's how you go out and inform the public. Um, you know, don't dump dump antifreeze down the storm sewer drain and. And, uh, you know, the, the nice things that people always tend to, to try to do. Larry, the bottom line is we have to do this. We right? have to do it. It's a requirement. So, right. committee? And, and it's just the best way that we can do it is, is going with the package deal through Sweetwater. Make a motion to approve the uh, payment of the invoice to Sweetwater or Southern Wisconsin Watersheds Trust Inc. in the amount of $12,620,000. That's six. Let me rephrase that twelve thousand six hundred and twenty dollars. I'll second that. So I I do recall this wasn't this brought up in our budget meeting. Mm -hmm. Yes, we discussed it then. Mm -hmm. Okay, I, I know I heard this before and realized that it was going up. Is this the line in? So the yes. <laughs> Any more questions or comments? Hearing none, we'll vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. It's unanimous. Well, number. I'll change your order. And again, I'll summarize this one. Um, this is the, the last item that, that completes well 12's construction. Um, when we made it a shallow well and the way that um, it was drilled, we went into the um, limestone about 20 feet. And the casing stopped at the just into the limestone. And basically the DNR, um, the DNR directive and, and design requirement is that you fill that uh, 20 feet of that drill hole with uh, a fine grout, uh, a fine material cementous grout concrete, but not a lot of stone in it. And you have to uh, pump it down there. And as you pump it down, you're taking the water out and things, but that seals off, that reseals that, that drill hole that was there. And any fissures or cracks that were in there will get sealed. And that's a requirement of, of the DNR. And, and that amount was uh, $17,682. And so we did that work well 12 is done if you've driven past to the site is basically cleaned up from all construction you'll see a, a piece of steel uh, 24 inch diameter or so sticking out of the ground and the cap is welded on it is sealed tight um, waiting for the building to be built and a pump to be put on it so this completes well 12. i'll make a motion to approve change order number three in the amount not to exceed seventeen thousand six hundred eighty two dollars it's supposed to be four cents. Oh. No, zero cents, right? Okay. Yeah, the, the change order is for zero cents. Gotcha. Yeah, that's a typo. I'll, I'll second it. Any further discussion? We'll vote all in favor. Aye. 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 Opposed? It's unanimous. Uh, moving on to M, Lennon and Maple Road, State Municipal Financial Agreement. So, um, I'll summarize this one also. We've heard about this before. Back in uh, 2019, committee uh, authorized the engineering department to proceed with an engineering study of the, uh, of the traffic um, intersections in the village of Germantown. We identified the 30 most dangerous intersections. Um, out of that, um, there were two or three that were identified as the most dangerous intersections. One of them was um, an intersection not in our control, which is uh, Highway 145 and Division Road by the DPW site. Mm -hmm. uh, the state has already told us, and they put it in their, in their um, budget, that's going to be made into a turnaround intersection. And so that one did, got knocked off our list. The other one that the, uh, the design firm, Traffic Analysis and Design, thought there was a good chance to get was um, reworking, um, horizontally reworking the intersection of Landon and Maple. Mequon Road and Maple mm -hmm. by the quick trip. Um, and, and so we, uh, we applied for it. They have a very good success rate. So we applied for it and we were awarded um, the grant for that project in a uh, total amount of uh, $800,980. Along with that becomes um, the agreement here before you tonight that we have to um, approve um, to the committee and village board process uh, for the village to enter into this contract. This is exactly what we entered into for the reconstruction of Freistadt and Maple intersection. It's, it's the same grant um, to the state. And what the improvements will be at Maple and uh, Mequon is going to be eastbound Mequon. Um, we'll have a right turn lane to go southbound Maple. Uh, northbound Maple will have a right turn lane constructed to go eastbound Maple. 
it did better. And there's some other improvements on the westbound and northbound Maple. There's some some movement requirements that have to be corrected there. Um, actually, there's a lot of rear end accidents at that corner of the intersection. Surprisingly, I don't know why, but there's a lot of rear end accidents there. And that's basically the extent of the improvements there. The lighting and everything, nothing has to be changed there. It's mostly just um, horizontal um, improvements of traffic, geometric traffic control movements. And this is scheduled for 2024. Right. Um, they moved it out that far. They Through the process, they asked us if we could live with that. And that means they were going to award it. So, of course, we said, yes, we could live with that. So. I don't know if it matters, but there's a, a typo in the document that says it. The work will include adding a right turn lane from westbound Mequon to southbound Maple. Well, that can't happen. That can't. I mean, <laughs> it could, but it would that'd be a lot more. That'd be a, that would take a bridge. <laughs> um, okay. Did you note? Could you note where you saw that in here? Yeah, it's it's the summary uh, explanation, and it's. Uh, What's on our document? Yeah, it's our document. Yeah. Right. Oh, that's okay. Then that, that's my that's my error. That's, that's my error then in the explanation. I was like, I was trying to picture that. <laughs> yep, I'm typing too fast. You're, you're making sure we're reading this stuff. <laughs> so really, that that Maple Road, that south, the south side of Mequon Road, the Maple Road exit's going to get wider and yes. get two two turn lanes and those two traffic lights will have to get moved mm -hmm. and 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 the storm covered crossing on the east side will have to get extended and it's a quite extensive job there but i think it's really improved that intersection Committee? are we going to put any kind of walkways through there or anything larry or uh it wasn't determined to be as part of this project it would be a village project if we would do that. I'll um, make a motion to recommend approval of the. Uh, let's see, to enter into the state municipal municipal financial agreement to work for work to reconstruct the intersection of Mequon, Lannan Roads, and Maple Road, and forward with a positive recommendation to the village board. I'll second that motion. Additional discussion. Hearing none, we'll vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? It's unanimous. That'd be nice. Okay, and capstone developer agreement. So this is for the development agreement for the capstone 41 development. Um, that is, the uh, again, the development that's on the south side of Holy Hill Road, uh, um, directly across from the, the Zilber development, the Briggs and Stratton building. Um, this is for phase one, which is the westerly most building of three buildings that will be proposed on that site. Um, the whole site has been approved through planning commission. Um, the developer's agreement, of course, is to address any public utilities that would be installed. And so the only thing installed in there that will be on site as far as a public utility will be sanitary sewer. It's actually going to tie into a manhole that's in the easement through the Wetterall property. Um, coming on the very south side of this uh, development. It won't be out in the road, uh, Holy Hill right of way. And um, it will be constructed to be able to serve all three buildings as they're constructed. Uh, water um, to the site is off of the 16 inch water main that's on Holy Hill Road. Uh, we installed to the Holy Hill Road Santa Sewer Project of three 12 inch services to the site underneath that contract. And we have an agreement with a developer um, that he will reimburse the, the village for the cost of installing those services. It just made more sense for us to do them through the project um, and for him also to get it, just get it done that way. Um, they were located as, as per their direction. So if um, the only the otherwise the, the agreement is, is fairly standard, um, there are some financial um, um, presentations in here that, to be quite honest with you, I could not answer any questions you may have with it. Um, Mr. Kreppel could not be here tonight. The, um, what we discussed was that if the committee could approve this, process it on to the village board as new business. Mm -hmm. Um, that way, that those discussions could be held there if there were any concerns. Um, if Blank you have any concerns with you, you could bring them up tonight and we could be prepared to answer them. But Planning Commission has also approved this, or the village planner has um, reviewed and approved. Yes. Mm -hmm. And legal as well. Uh, yeah, it, this is approved by our legal and the developer's legal. So it's going to be discussed at board anyway. 
the developer is here tonight. Mike um, Baber from Capstone 41 is here. If we do have any other questions of him. I personally don't. I'll look pretty straightforward to me. Seeing these in the past, um, I'll make a motion to approve, uh, recommend approval of the uh, document and passing it on to the village board as a new business item. Thank you. That's one more thing. If you do your motion. Sec. What else you got, Larry? Uh, I just want to point out also that the developer has been um, very good working with the village with the redesign of um, Holy Hill Road. We really had some area constraints of what we're going to do with the stormwater because it's going to be a curve and gutter road. And um, he's been very helpful. And along that line, all the stormwater drainage from Holy Hill Road will go into their westerly most pond. And so that is also part of this agreement. It's nice to see that whole area just develop. That's beautiful. So, any more discussion or questions? The developer? No. We'll vote all in favor. Aye. Aye. Opposed. <clears throat> One in opposition. Okay. Thank you. Um, let's see. Acceptance of improvement sanitary water main extension on Holy Hill Road. Um, this is so that the project of extending the sanitary sewer and water main from Gately Crossing to the westerly limits on Holy Hill Road is completed, um, accepted by the utilities, and I'm just looking for final uh, um, approval for final acceptance. At that point, we will do that and uh, start the one-year warranty on the work that they performed. Make a motion to approve the uh, final acceptance of the Holy Hill Sanitary Sewer and Water Main Extension Project. I'll second. Discussion? None will vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? It's unanimous. Reduction of letter of credit for Renwood LLC. Um, this is the first um, phase of Renwood, as I'm calling now Renwood South, since there is a north. Um, everything is completed. The, um, the final lift of asphalt was placed about uh, three weeks ago. Um, just before the cold weather started hitting, the only thing left remaining to do on the project is the planting of trees and we're still in discussions with them. Um, they are not against planting the trees. It was just a matter of, um, where do we want them? Um, there's some debate. Do we want them in our public property or on private property? And, and so we're going to have a meeting with that. So I feel that the, uh, the dollar amount of $115,000 is sufficient to cover any remaining outstanding work that they have to do. So we're going to hold 150, but we have about 115 left. Yes, That's what it looks like. Yes. All right, I'll make a motion to uh, reduce the line of credit by $450,000 for the remaining balance of 150,000. Do I have a second? I'll second that. Questions or discussions? Favor? Aye. 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 Two unanimous. Okay. Last one. Moving on to uh, request. This was something put on by one of our village trustees, Dennis Myers. Request to use remaining funds toward the 2022 annual roads improvement program from the Goldendale um, transfer, correct? Correct. So there's about $623,000. $3,000, don't quote me exactly on that, remaining in that fund. 100000 of the 723 or so we got from the counter's transfer was used to pay for the reconstruction of the intersection of Freistadt and Goldendale. That was, was that? also in the agreement. How much was that? Part? The original number was around, I believe it was around 723000 was the original transfer. But in the agreement, we agreed to pay um, a maximum of $100,000 towards the reconstruction of Freistadt and, Maple, uh, Freistadt and Goldendale. So that brought us down to 623000 Actually, Matthew has a pretty good summary here, a uh, uh, follow-up email. It says we received 692250 from Washington County. Okay. And the 2022 recommended budget allocates 100,000 from that reserve to assist in the funding that leaves 592,250 from the initial transfer. What uh, what plans do we actually have for that additional money? Is Goldendale going to need replacement at some point in the near future? Um, what what are your thoughts on that, Larry? Goldendale will need a resurface 
um, project in, in the future. I don't think it's that near. I think I think we need all that construction to take place out there. Um, there's already um, loose talk about um, developers look at the northeast corner of Holy Hill and in Freistadt or Holy Hill and Goldendale. And so that whole area, I think my recommendation is unless something really fails, we hold off on Goldendale until the, a majority of that construction is completed. We're going to redo the intersection of Goldendale and Holy Hill with the reconstruction of Holy Hill Road. So that's going to take care of several hundred feet in each direction on 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 uh, the TID, right? Yeah, right. TID eight covers all that. So um, Goldendale like resurfaced before the transfer of Y. Um, it a lot of it from lot of it. Reichstead coming north was yeah. with the sewer and water project. Yeah, we repaved that with the sewer and water project. So a good portion of that from Freistadt coming north is a brand new road from shoulder to shoulder. Um, so prior to this request even coming in, um, um, the minister and I had discussed this, these funds, and um, my and, and Steve was agreement in using the funds for that. I guess there's permission to do it somewhere through approvals, but I was looking at trying to get country or drive um, done from Mequon to Freistad, and um, as a standalone project, I'm not quite sure what it will all take at this time, but I'm sure those funds would 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 cover the cost so that that road has been on everybody's list since I started here. Um, and so I was trying to use the, I was looking at trying to earmark the funds for that. And that's pretty much what um, I think trustee Myers was looking for also was. Well, I think that, towards that. country air makes sense. Sure does. And get much worse. Um, plus it's so highly traveled with the park and everything in that area. Now construction. So are these funds restricted to road funds or is this just in the general account that we could use for anything? Um, I don't know if I can answer that honestly and truthfully. I know it came from the road transfer. Yes. Um, and, and so I, I, I just don't recall the village's motions on that as, as it was coming in. I, I don't think it was restricted. I think it's, I think it's a, a pool of money that can be used as decided by the village, but it came from a, from the, tr the transfer of roads. I think we were looking at continuing with using it as, as the additional money for improving roads. I would ask, as I have asked in the past, that we research whether this money is earmarked for roads or not. We can, we can, I can verify that. Um, and I know, I, I just know, don't I know it did come from. Rome. I probably knew at 1 time. I just don't have the answer right now. Because I, I did go back and look into the village board minutes to answer this question and I was unable to. Answer it as being earmarked for roads and right. I would love to have clarification about that. We can have that by the board village board meeting. I'm sure that's not a problem. Yeah, I guess. Um. Not knowing what, what you have in mind, but um, once again, this kind of money, when we get it in, if it turns out we, we could use it on anything, it would have to be on some type of capital improvement, not a reoccurring cost. Like I'm thinking, Correct. police, no police. Um, and roads are our biggest complaint. I've heard many board members talk about that all the time. To me, it makes a very natural transition to take this money and use it on roads, perhaps even reducing some of our borrowing this year by half a million dollars, which would be a big deal when we have to address that in uh, February. Um, but it's up to the board. Um, I'll entertain a motion. So what's what's the question tonight? Just recommend these funds be used for future road and future road improvement and not specify the roads. Anything like that? You are, right? the, Trustee Meyer's request is to use the balance amount listed on the attachment for this request in the 2022 road projects. He, he, he may have other projects that he had earmarked that I'm not aware of. I told him that I had, I had thought about using it for the country air because I think that's not going to be a, a cheap reconstruction. It won't be 2022 though either. 2022 is when I'd like to get it done. With we're all also, the construction traffic? We're also up, also in 2022, we have our, our, our local road improvement plan, plan money. Um, that we get from the state. This is the year we get it. And How much is that? Um, 60, I think it went up to 60, I wish Eli was here, $63,000, I'm going to say, 62 or $63,000. It's like, it's about 500 feet. <laughs> it's not going to get you very far. Okay. But I mean, it's, it's 
something, right? So I had, um, I, I mean, I can shed a little bit of light in this. I've had several discussions with Dennis regarding this and, and Dennis is, um, I mean, maybe he's backed off a little bit. He wanted to earmark this for, for specific roads and specific projects and, and have us specify those and say, look, this has to be used on country or it has to be used on, on, um, you know, a few of the other, what he mm -hmm. deems as, as bad roads. So I think he's, uh, now, I guess backed off of that it has to be on these particular roads to. He wants to keep it safe for the roads and <laughs> that would go in a direct contrast to what Phil is asking. <laughs> so. Well, the, the, the only reason, the only reason I. Bring it up is I also have had conversations with trustee Myers. And if if the money is earmarked for roads, absolutely. Let's let's spend it on roads. But as we all know, we have some pretty extensive expenses coming up where it might be wiser to cut this money in half and use half on roads and for those other expenses. I, I would just like the the clarity that I haven't been able to find and, and nobody's been able to provide yet. Because I do remember I remember the meeting, but I don't remember the, the earmarking of the money. I don't know. Well, I think if we um we can research that and come yeah, up with an answer. It's gonna be a debate at, at the village board of how this money is gonna be used. I mean we're not the it's gonna be a new uh, new business agenda item. It's not going to be on the consent agenda, so we'll all have another crack at this. I'll go ahead and make a motion, um, and my motion will be to uh, take and transfer the months, uh, the money that we do receive, and put it into the rose budget for 2022, as our trustee Myers suggested. No, it's not going to make that much difference. But could we just move this without any recommendation to the village board? I suppose we could, and just have the debate there. Okay, why don't we do that then? We need to vote on that actually to move it without recommendation. I don't think so. If you're making a motion, you have to vote on it, I would think. If you if you just well, I would just I would make the motion just push it on the village board. Okay, I I'll, I'll make the motion just to move this on to the village board without a recommendation. We'll second it. Uh any more discussion? Now I think we got it. All in favor? Aye. 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 It's unanimous. That's our last agenda item. Um project update. Did anybody pick out that you need an update on here? Also, how's the water tower going? In the uh, so the water tower that they're finalizing the um, submittal to the DNR. They're actually waiting for one last item from from the village um, to verify the projected water demand, um, and that Jeff Rutzloff and I are working on because of the rezoning of the 2050 plan. Yeah, it changes a little bit, but otherwise, um, the tower is sitting out there, uh, as you see in the picture, um. We're just waiting for, um, approval from the DNR for the higher tower. Um, and we're submitting to the DNR for the, for the tower to serve the little section of, uh, well, I should say a little, the section of Germantown on, on the. Southwest, um, area of Freistadt and town line road on the west side of the interstate. That's an area of the village that's higher. Um, and it would require the high tower to serve that area. So, um, and the, the DNR along with that, because we've changed the service area, um, they're just going through, you know, dotting the I's, crossing the T's and saying, okay, you're changing that. Resubmit your design data to us for review. That's, that's really what we're waiting for. And, um, the our engineering firm Foth, um, has accumulated all the information they need. Um, we've had several discussions and meetings on it. And we're just waiting for um, the rezoning information for the 2050 plan that I can give them that information. Type of zoning, the, the engineers have a, 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 a set rule of thumb um, volume of water that a house uses or an apartment uses or industry uses. So whatever the zoning is, they can apply that then to that acreage and then develop a, 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 a water flow need. And they apply that to the, the sizing of the tower and everything. Any other updates anybody needs from the update sheet? Actually, it's a very good update sheet. Thank you, Larry. Yeah. It's very self-explanatory, actually. So, so the last item on there is um, there, there's going to be a roundabout at some point in time on Division Road and Highway 145. 
um, probably in 2023. I, uh, I just want to specify that there has been signs put out on Freistadt Road in 145 roundabout is needed here. That was not sanctioned by anyone in the village or as part of the village. Some individual put those signs out as something that they wanted. The roundabout movement, <laughs> uh, the roundabout movement right? I actually have a preliminary sketch of the roundabout um, from the DOT already um, for about six months now Division. on my office wall. Yeah, and and it shifts a little bit. Um, it's not centered on the intersection. It shifts a little bit. Um, and they talked to us um, a, a little over a year ago already. They they said they've tried. It's one of the most dangerous intersections in this part of the state, actually. They've tried um, the reflective tape on the posts. They've tried some other signing modifications. And they feel that none of that works. Um, the best thing they can do is just reconstruct the intersection to a roundabout. That's good. I mean, you have that crazy angle. Totally where agree. To barely turn your neck that far. <laughs> and and the last publication where they identified our project being funded for um, Maple and and Mequon Road, that was on that list of funded projects. So it is not um, theory anymore. It's on their list. That intersection. That'll be. Because of traffic control issues, that'll that'll be a year, nine months, because they have to shift everything around to build this part and that part. We did um, we approved when they did 145 and Donges Bay roundabout. We approved um, shutting traffic down and detour site detours on our onto our off of our roads because it shortened the project by about six to eight weeks. Just because they could build the whole round part at one time and pour it and not do it in three or four sections. So, um, now they get a little tied up with this here. So they'd have to use lovers and century. And after we rebuild that this year, there's no way I'm going to allow them to route truck traffic and everything through there. All right. <laughs> they, 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 you think we'd get a couple calls out of that 1. I do try to answer your questions. I try to anticipate questions and you, I, I hope this answers. Your questions you may get from residents. So you don't have to call staff or anything. That's what I try to do with this. So. As as the projects I'm involved with dwindle because I'm not involved with anything as of last year, as you're all aware. So my my involvement isn't as intensely as it used to be to keep you all informed of what's going on in the village. So um, I think you need to pass that document on to people that have to keep it up. And it's great to have those updates. We need those. This the, the Buckthorn issue. So here's got one. What's the answer? Well, well, I don't. Yeah, we'll bring up. I, I really, Tim gets so, so involved that only because Tim Zimmerman does only because of he runs the recycling yard and he, and he knows from the DNR what he can and he can't take and when he can't, can and can't take it. Um, I don't know what the answer is. It's going to be a good topic to bring in a research and we'll all, we'll all learn and comment on it, I'm sure. <laughs> the individual that came tonight seemed very, very knowledgeable on. And invasive species. So. Anything else on the summary? Are we good? Set. Um, we'll set our next meeting date. We're gosh, January already. Because Tuesday, January 4th at 6 p.m. work for everyone. Sure. If we get out early. Okay. I'm on a plane the 5th, so don't keep me here too late. We will not. We <laughs> never keep anybody too late. Part of what we don't do. <laughs> um, okay, that'll be the meeting date then. And with that, we will adjourn at 715, 713 actually. Thank you, everyone.